So I'll fall August 4th and I uh, thought I'd change the scenery up a little bit more. Again, the back side of the cabin here, um, right around dusk is when this shot was taken. So looking to get back over there. I haven't been over there in a few weeks. So looking to try and uh, spend some time there actually this next coming month. So I'll be out there for September into October. So that's when I like it better. Less bugs, less ticks, man, the heat out there, the, the chiggers and the ticks, man, I don't know what it is, but I, I attract them. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. In fact, I've had people out there tell me, well, you come from Arizona, you guys got bugs out there, but man, the bugs here, they want to get away from you. They want to find a crack somewhere and they don't want to get anywhere near you out there. They hunt you down. They find you and they go places on you. You shouldn't have stuff. Believe me, I know. And it sucks. So uh, this will be a quick one today. I want to hit on just a couple of things. Market is actually doing very, very, very well. We're holding some pretty good ground here. And um, it looks like the mortgage-backed securities have jumped up into a point where it's only been back up a, a, into territory. It's only jumped into a few times. So it doesn't seem, it doesn't seem to me it might, that it would hold up in there just because of how it's reacted in the past in that particular space. Um, so I am of the belief that we'll get up in there and maybe come right back down into our channel here. But that's just looking at some of the technical side of it. And I'm going to take a look at the 4.0 real quick here and see what that looks like. But I, again, it goes to prove we're going to stay within these ranges. You know, that um, in, probably within about a quarter to a half a percent to where we're at today is what I would, I would estimate just off of some guesses here. Yep. And so in the 4.0, we're not we're not quite reaching up into the to the heights that we've been in the past um so we're still staying a little bit more of that lower channel so for your 20 percent downs and your 25 percent downs i'm thinking we're just going to be staying in that that similar space uh for the next little while i'm not not sure exactly how long that's going to hold who, who knows there are going to be some other things that push push mortgage bonds up a little bit more maybe we can creep down but I'm, I'm not of the mindset that I would tell people hold out for something much better, but you never know what things are going to bring. We're in uncharted territory. Uh, when you get uh, your rate and you get locked in, just know every single thing we're getting right now is a huge gift. We already talked about inflation being over 7% nationally. Yeah, with, with interest rates where they're at now, we're so far below inflation, you're never even paying the rate, nor are you paying back the principal. We talked about that in the past. Go back and look at the uh, episode with Dr. John Abernathy so you can understand that a little bit more. But today, let's talk a little bit about appraisals. To uh, Very often, people like to look at cost per square footage and just look around the area and even spread wide and try and find houses that have the same you know square footage and that sold for the highest possible. Um, the other thing is folks will you know, look at trying to do a uh, what they call the burr strategy. You can buy a house distressed and you can rehab it and then um, you know, try and um, get it refinanced, rent it out, then repeat that process. You know, we have a delayed financing option that I'll share with you on the next time um, where we talk about that, where it actually is a very advantageous plan and it works out really well if you find the right property. Very often, I have found folks that have talked with somebody in a specific area. They said, we found this house. It doesn't need much cleanup. I can pick it up for 50 grand. Very little work. It's worth 100 when you look at the market. Well, sometimes you look at that house that they bought for 50 grand, and uh, they put a little cleanup into it and thinking, hey, there's houses out there selling for 100000 with that same bed bath count in that neighborhood. We're, we're going to have a, an awesome Hail Mary. They, they send a crew in there to shampoo the carpets, do a little paint fix some faucets and a few other things, and then um, maybe patch a couple things in the roof and maybe put in a new AC. And now all, all of a sudden for six, seven grand, they've got a you know $50,000 improvement. Take the time to look at the other houses that sold for 100,000. Go to realtor.com, go search the internet, see if you can see interior photos, see what it looks like inside. If the one you bought has 70 shag carpet and it has yellow cabinets, with Formica countertops and has that pink tile in the bathroom. Sure, it might be clean, it may be livable, it may be very, very, very well taken care of by the original owner who is like clean freak, that's possible. But when you compare that to an updated home that's completely been gutted and updated, I'm sorry, you're not gonna get the same appraised value. You're just not. They're gonna make it say it looks good, but it's extremely dated. So you may see you bought it for 50 grand, do a little bit of cleanup, I can't say that the appraiser is going to give you more than fifty-five, sixty thousand dollar value for that. But if you want to match, that you want to get that hundred thousand, look at the neighborhood. Don't just go with, "Hey, it's got great bones, and you know we fixed a couple of things, we can make that work." It doesn't work that way. You want to match it up. 
So look around your areas, look at those markets. When you're looking at the comparable sales and try to determine whether or not you want to slug it out with an appraiser about what their opinion of value is, have a good plan. When you get the comparable sales, don't just pull up cost per square foot and think you're gonna make, a, make some headway there. You want to be sure that you've looked at those comparables inside and out. Do they look like your house or do they not? If they look heavily improved, they're probably not gonna use those comparable sales. They're gonna try to find some that looks like yours. That's why I always tell people when you're doing one of these types of deals where you buy it and you rehab it and you do all this work to it and then you wanna get an appraiser to go out there so you can do a cash out refinance. And again, we'll talk about that one in the next deal. Um, just know that if you let the tenant move in before you get an appraisal in, appraiser to go out there, I don't know if you've ever seen tenants move in, man, but they look like they roll this big old crate in, full, stuff full of stuff that's all spring loaded. They pull the pin and they run out before shit blows all over the place. Just know that the appraiser is going to go in there and appraise a mess. They're not going to appraise your house for what it is. You know, and if you've got a tenant that's living in there pretty hard, I've seen some, some investors contact their tenant and say, hey, I'm going to send an appraiser out there. And if it's really clean, I'll knock a hundred bucks off your, your next rent. That's what I've seen some do. And then you get to know whether it's clean because you're going to get the appraisal. You can get the interior photos. And if it's a storm, you don't have to do that. But if it looks really good, even if the appraiser came in low, you honor your deal, right? And you have a better chance of an appraiser giving you a better idea of your value based upon him seeing a nice, clean place to work with. Also, a lot of people like to send appraisers out there for the rehab's done. I'm not a big fan of that. We're asking an appraiser to look at the house as is. Take your list of things that you want to do to it and give you a potential value. You're asking him to use his imagination. When was the last time you saw an appraiser have a very good imagination? I'm sorry, but their imaginations suck. Give them the time. Let them in the property the day after it's done. And I'm talking done. I'm talking you let, you have the, the contractor out. You have it spit polished. I want the lawn mowed, like, like right back here. Everything cleaned up. You see the hoses and stuff there? I want that put away. I want him to walk in and see a pristine location and think, okay, this is nice. And if you had, if you had pictures from before and you could see the shit storm that you bought and you cleaned up and made really awesome and some, some photos of the progression of the real major work you did, that's good. That's good because that way you're letting him see what things really are and not use imagination because don't leave it to his imagination at all. Give it that extra time. Don't put yourself in such a position that you got to push every, every date get appraiser in there during the process of construction so that we can send it back out there the day after it's rehabbed and then get your deal done and get it funded. Let's not do that. When you start pushing the windows, then everything starts to fall apart on you. Let's give it time. Let's make sure we're doing it the right way and the right manner. Appraisals can be very, very interesting things. They're not something that you can just throw a Hail Mary at. You've got to understand your market. You've got to understand what's selling in your market and what, why they're selling for that. You've got to understand if there's different neighborhood uh, nuances as well. So although trying to gather enough information to know more about your properties and what's selling and why and what the condition they are, the, the, the bed bath counts that are really moving weight, uh, whether they have a garage or not have a garage, all these have an impact, guys. Understand, amenities matter. The quality of the construction matters. The current condition matters. Be cautious about what you do when you put somebody in there to give you a potential value. Because sometimes if you're not very cautious about that and thinking ahead, it can come back and bite you in the ass. And then we got a battle on our hands. I fought a lot of them. I'd rather just be ahead of it. So if you have questions about the appraisal process, when you're getting ready to do that, let's talk. Let's be sure we go over it before we start sending an appraiser out there if we need to talk about some things in advance. As always, appreciate you watching. Go in to the you know, bottom of the, uh, the, uh, the initial email. Quit jerking off initiative. Go in there. Please subscribe. Click the subscribe button. Um, I thought that I'm really pushed to have all kinds of subscribers. I need at least 100 just so I can white label the dang thing. So help me do that. A lot of you already have. But help me do that on this one. Um, and I'll keep pushing that probably even earlier in the, the videos. So you guys don't have to wait till the very ass end to get reminded. Thank you. I appreciate you doing what you do. I appreciate the trust and continue to work with me and my team.